This is my patient, Josh. Josh came in with a left ankle, left hip injury. He stepped out of the car, stepped into a pothole. Uh, his body went one way and his foot stayed. Too much pressure on this one hurts, but I know I can do that. Yeah, I've edited this exam way down, but basically Josh has weakness in his quads and in his left hip and his left hip flexor. What we can see with this muscle test is that Josh has pain in his left hip flexors, uh, both through muscle testing and when he was trying to lift his knee in the exam. The tuning fork is used here to see how Josh perceives information through vibration. And he had pain on that left knee prior to the adjustment. Then after the adjustment, we went back and rechecked and it was less painful. Like that's almost what I feel like. When I put an input into the body, and that input could be chiropractic, stretching, massage, trigger point therapy, whatever it might be, and when any practitioner, physical therapist, massage therapist, chiropractor puts an input into the body, those signals go into the body, but ultimately they go into the brain. Then the brain deals with those messages and then gives an output signal. 10% of the brain's output deals with muscles. You've heard the saying in the past that you only use 10% of your brain. It's true that you only use 10% of your brain to move your body, but you use 100% of your brain. The other 90% of the brain is dedicated to your autonomics, heart rate, blood pressure, peristalsis, kidney filtration, all the automatic controls. I'm measuring the muscles and or doing some type of a balance test. So that's me measuring the output. So I'm gonna put an input in and measure the output. When I adjusted the ankle, that was our input. And then we went back and checked the left hip flexors. That's the output. There was no change. So that tells me that didn't have a real significant impact on that hip. It might have no doubt helped his ankle and had I did some other tests that might have shown up, but I'm trying to get his hip fixed. Then I went and did a cerebellar exercise and then once again, went back and rechecked the left hip flexors. It had no impact. Push out. All right, so let's slow this down and analyze what happened. When I had Josh turn his head to the right, he should have had facilitation of the right glute need. So the fact that Josh's right hip became inhibited with the right head turn, this is abnormal. So at this point, I know he has some type of dysfunction in his cervical spine. This is some simple emotional work in the attempt to remove any negative emotions associated with the injury from Josh's body. All right, we're not done, but I want you to go walk and say anything. Say better work. standing on it like this like I could feel it resonate okay and right now it's kind of like like I feel like it's healing itself let's go do three more actually let's do this well, I'm a big fan of chiropractic neurology and muscle testing and massage and all these things and all the trick stuff that we can do in the office sometimes there's nothing better than a good old-fashioned elbow into muscles breaking up scar tissue, adhesions, helping reset the proprioception and gang of the goli tendon organs. So this is very painful for Josh, there's no doubt, but it's also very therapeutic. Hurts so good, Doc, hurts so good. All right, Jeez. go, go watch. <laughs> yeah, that feels. All right. Ah. 
close to yeah getting there like where before dude i couldn't even like like manage like i'd have to gimp along that can i use the toe just to see how you're doing There you go, man. Doc, you're the man. <laughs> Thank it's a you. Miracle. <laughs>